must maintain our culture here, our African American culture. We must maintain our history and we must let everybody else know about our history. And part of our history is the second line which came from the triple concentric circle dancing uh, those Sunday afternoons in Congo Square. And to this day you have the second line which came off that, still alive in New Orleans. And we encouraged that second line whenever we had funerals, the second line picked up right outside the church door and went part way to the cemetery, first in the form of a dirge. A very slow, mournful thing, like just a closer a walk with the very mournful, very slow. Until they had gotten pretty far out toward the cemetery. I practically grew up in a sanctified church, Catholic church, Methodist church. I had a lot of surroundings when I was a young kid. And the music was unbelievable. And the music and the rhythms that I heard in the Sanctified Church matched so much with the New Orleans secular beat and the African beat. It was, you know, I, I, I immediately realized that as a kid, you know, because I had grown up, you know, listening to secular music all my life. So when I went to the church and, and, and heard what was going on in the Sanctified Church, I, I immediately put the two together, you know, with the Sanctified, the rhythm and blues, the Catholic, the whole thing, you know what I'm saying? Hurricane Brass Band was invited for French Quarter Festival. We went over there and she took us to wreck Doc Watson's house. So we we really were in the ninth ward and we, we saw the mess. And I've never seen uh, it still hurts. I've ne never seen so many men cry together and, and hold their hands. Katrina comes in when you don't even have to say her name, you know, it's something that I think it's so vivid in our hearts and in our minds and what we want to do is not forget it, we want to fix it now, we have to try to fix it now. Katrina, uh, the devastation, uh, what it did to our city, we lost the cultural uh, Cup. The only culture that we gave from America is the jazz music, and we we actually losing it. We haven't lost it yet. We're trying to save this cup from not breaking at the bottom and completely letting everything drop out. Then, when the band was ready to turn back toward the church, they picked it up because it was a sign of resurrection. I started as a kid when I was 12, 13 years old, playing on pots and pans around the house. And I, as I grew older, I started following my father, Chester Ralph Jones, who was a drummer. And I followed my dad around with a bunch of jazz funerals, parades, and nightclubs. And also I watched him play on the boats. And also I went around Preservation Hall and listened to my daddy perform on many, on many occasions. Music is a universal language, and with the, the New Orleans jazz, you know, the, it's known 
everywhere throughout the world. You know, it, it, it's, uh, oh, it feels good when you do that. Slaves left the mass, they left with all the stories of the Old Testament and the New Testament in their heads. So when they went out with the other African slaves, they gladly joined in the chants and began to mix in the Old Testament stories and the New Testament stories with the African chants. And so without realizing it, they were giving birth to the only unique art form which to this day exists in the United States. Working with people from New Orleans, it's uh, adding an extra flavor and, and an extra motivation brings it into in, into your band and uh, I always think that it brings the best in you. And I went to Loyola, Loyola University for five years and uh, graduated with a degree in musical education. And of course, that's where my degree came from, but my real musical education came from the streets of New Orleans. I've been involved with music ever since I was eight years old. Eight years old. I made my own user number three tub, which we used to bring inside to take our bath with. Okay? And I used that as a bass drum. I used a slop bucket for a snare drum. And I wound up with a whole set of drums. Pot covers for the cymbals. The number five tub for the bass drum and a slob joke with a snare gun. Well, I was in uh, New Orleans in uh, 2003, and uh, I got my saxophone uh, with me, of course, and then uh, it happened to, uh, to do a funeral parade. It was uh, the death of uh, blues musician Earl King, and that was a great experience for me to uh, to play there. The musicians are like the point of a spear. If you get them feeling good, they go home and they transmit that to everybody they play for. It's amazing. I think the music part has helped the city more than anything else because people recognize the music and have, have, show, have shown us that they appreciate the music and have put the musicians to work. First off, I'd like to thank you so much for the support that you've shown the New Orleans people and the musicians from New Orleans. The city's still in the rebuild process, but we are coming back and we want you to come and visit us. We're ready. To, to, to entertain you with fantastic restaurants, great music places, music halls, we're ready for you.
Just a prayer for New Orleans. Just a prayer for New Orleans. Yeah. Just and pray Just and pray for the world. 